Dan Lucas, the founder of Random Studio, will exactly explain how that works. Dan, warm applause, please. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, like Robert said, my name is Dan Lucas, and I'm the founder and the managing director of uh, Random Studio. Uh, Random Studio uh, it started out in, um, oh yeah, in, in 2005 as a digital production studio. Uh, we were mainly focused on creating things for the screen, websites and uh, microsites, uh, all that kind of stuff. But soon enough, we became uh, interested in how this technology and our um, skills in interactive would manifest itself into the, the physical domain. Because we figured there's, there's something magical about making something that is static interactive, make something move. It's like, like when you have a puppet player, when he's holding a puppet from strings, the puppet is dead wood, it's static, nothing is happening. But then when the fingers move, this, this dead wooden puppet starts to become alive. And this is something that we became very interested in. Um, oh. So now, 16 years later, we transformed into being an, an experience design studio. That's what we call ourselves now. And this means that we have moved from the digital-only domain into the domain where the digital meets the physical. Um, we, we create experiences in this domain that hopefully trigger surprise, make people curious, or, or touches them, leaves them with a sense of wonder. That's what we always try to do with the work that we do. This is our studio, and this is actually a shot from our studio when we just finished renovating it, so it's very clean and pretty and has a lot of plans in it. It still has a lot of plans in it, but now it's been inhabited. We've been there for five years now, and it's filled with around 30 to 35 people from people all over the world, a very international crew. And we do this with intention because I'm very interested in to get all these different perspectives. It's important to us because in order to be able to surprise people, you have to make new work. That's at least what we believe. So the different perspectives are important to us. But not only the different perspectives, but also the different disciplines. We have um, designers, artists, uh, producers, um, a, a, a range of different engineers, people that know how to program the back end, front end, but also uh, creative technologists. A lot of different disciplines, and it's important to us because we want to not only be able to come up with an idea, but also be able to make it. And the reason why that's important to us, because often you find that when you come up with something in your mind and you start making it, then it, mm, it doesn't really work. Or you feel, okay, this is the right direction, but we need to add something to it to make it really interesting. And also, as I said, we always try to make new things. And sometimes clients are like, all right, so I'm going to give you this budget, but you can't really tell me what you're going to make yet. So the, the making process is important so we can bring the client along and make prototypes so they get a feel for what they are going to get. Um, now I'm going to show you just this one project, actually, to give you a bit of a taste of where we are right now, what kind of projects we do. And this project is um, an installation that we did for ADO, for Mini Living. It's in ADO, which is a, a maker's space in Brooklyn, in New York. And they asked us to create a spatial installation to celebrate the launch of the Mini, the new electric Mini. And what we did, we, we created this installation, who cons which consists out of these three rings. From these rings, they, we hung panels, and there are different shapes, different colors, different materials, they have different gradients. In the middle, we put a light sculpture, a LED light sculpture. And all these rings, they, they turn in different velocities. So what's happening is that the insulation itself constantly takes a different shape. But also, because it has a light in the middle, it casts different shadows and different shape and different colors. Um, I'll show you a quick video what it, what happened with it, or how it looks. Is there a bit of sound with this one?
the, the concept behind this project from, from our point of view was what we wanted to create is, is people should be able to experience what you would experience when you're in a car driving through a city and uh, you're exploring a new domain, sun is going under and you're kind of dreaming. So, I only showed you this project, but we've been doing tons and tons of these installations, and we've made many, many mistakes, but we have made so many that we're making less mistakes, and we've all matured, we all became a bit older, and now we're feeling like, all right, what's our next move? What, what can we do to be challenge ourselves again? And before we could decide on that, we, we kind of zoomed out. We're thinking about what's, what's happening in the domain that we operate in, and that that domain is where people and technology and space start interacting. What's going on in that domain? And what you see now is that technology is everywhere. When I started the company 16 years ago, we were still struggling with download issues. You know, we couldn't build a website that was too heavy because it wasn't possible. And now, technology is everywhere. We're consuming digital media in a really intense way. And Bill Gates said that everything in life will be touched by digital in 15 years. So it's really a digital revolution that is happening now, and we're still in it. And it has a huge impact on, on how we connect as human beings, how we connect with ourselves, how we connect with each other, but also how we connect with the environment that we are currently in. So we, we, we did our research and we, we picked up on, on a few things that I would like to share with you. Uh, first of all, how humans and technology, of what technology does, how we humans connect. I think there is like four billion people on social media every day. And these social media, the word social, suggests that it connects us. But what's happening is that people only post their, 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 their happy moments on, on these platforms. And they're not being vulnerable. And I think in order to make a connection with each other, we need to be vulnerable. We need to show the whole picture. Of course, we can be happy, but we can also sad. And to be honest about that really allows us to connect. And these social media, they, they don't offer real connections. They offer simulations of connections. And what's happening as well is that we use services from the big tech giants, which are really good services, and we become, become dependent on it. And we don't pay for them, but we pay with our data. And with that data, these big tech giants create profiles. And these profiles are being fed with information that belong to these profiles, and we start identifying with these profiles. So we don't really know anymore, but we become more and more a profile. When you start identifying with your profile, everyone becomes like a profile island. And if you want to connect with each other, you need to be able to understand each other. And if you start believing your own reality, then it becomes difficult to connect to each other. And the third thing that we saw is that there is a, an application for almost everything in life. You could, there's an app for everything. So back in the day, when I was interested in getting some new music, I would go to the record store, I would go to a physical place, I would talk to the owner of the record store, is there anything new going on? Or I call my friends, is there, is there something interesting that I should check out? Now I grab my phone, open Spotify, and there's 400 million records right there. So, not to be judgmental, but what you see is the way we use, we choose to use technology, and maybe sometimes it happens in, uh, unconsciously, it kind of disconnects us to a certain extent. And also, what happens um, when we, the way we use technology, we also disconnect to a certain extent with the space that we're in. Two, two uh, things that popped out for us in that realm. One is that the more time we spend in the virtual, we do that by swiping and tapping on a device. So that the texture of life becomes a smooth piece of glass. Whereas in the real world, I, have, uh, I can use my senses. I, I, I feel the temperature here. I, I know where you guys are at. I can sense, I can see, I can smell. It's, it's, it's a lot easier to be present in a space when you use all your senses. And another thing is that these days, we all carry this mobile device in our pockets. And where I would normally go 
into my bathroom, I would take a shower, or I would get rid of my human waste, right? Now, when I sit on the toilet, I can grab my phone and check my emails. And all of a sudden, my bathroom that was once my bathroom becomes my office. And I go to a restaurant, and I usually I would go to a restaurant because I really like the food there, and I would like to, to spend that eating experience with my loved ones, with people that I care for and have attention for them. And all of a sudden, I grab my phone and I start chatting with my friend. All of a sudden, this restaurant is transformed in my friend's living room. So it becomes really hard to connect with the space. If any space can be any space, you know, you're always at home, but you're never at home. So, um, these were just a few things that popped out when we started researching our domain. And we thought, oh man, that's, that's actually the complete opposite of what we want to achieve with the studio. We want to make work that invite people to, to play, to connect with each other, to be aware of the space that they're in. And we do that by trying to create new experiences. And th this image um, is actually from the Roxy. Uh, it was an old club here in Amsterdam. And they, um, it, it, this is actually the, the source of, uh, <laughs> some people know, um, uh, there, there was a source of inspiration for me. Because what happened here was they always push things. They, they, they had different interiors every six weeks. They had acts that were always pushing it. There were sometimes pretty weird things going on. Sometimes they were not so good. Sometimes they were really good. But it created a, an atmosphere of exploration. And people felt invited to explore too. So people started to dress weird, started to dance weird, and they kind of felt free. There was no real reason to judge because it was exploration. It was allowed to make mistakes. And what happened then is people really started connecting. People always talked about the, the family in the Roxy. And they really connected to this, this space. So when it burned down, everyone was really sad. It was, a, it was a thing. So that's why this was also a source, always a source of inspiration. So what we want to do with our studio is create spaces where I can invite people to connect again to each other, to themselves, but also to the space that they're in. And this is the new domain that we were entering. We have done these installations, but these installations were often isolated projects within a space. Whereas now, I'm interested, we are interested to look at the space holistically, to merge the digital with the physical. So there's no difference anymore. Because there's nothing wrong with technology. Technology is actually super interesting and rich. Technology is real time. It's interactive. It's transient, which means that it can connect spaces. It has a lot of very interesting attributes to create this sense of wonder. But I want to use this technology to bring people away back from their screens into the physical world. And now I'm going to tell you uh, how we want to do this. This is, a, this, is, this is our pragmatic approach on how we want to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to when, when I get a, a, a request from a client to build this interactive space, because, uh, of, of course, they're super interested in this, and then we're going to build this. It's a technical infrastructure, which we call a tech theater. And essentially, what we're trying to do is, OK, we have, let's say, a store. This is the architectural shape of a store. And in this store, we're going to put we're going to put screens, lighting, a, a scent dispersion machine, uh, speakers, sensors, so we know where people are. Um, we're going to control the climate. We can make it colder. We can make it more humid. We can make it warmer. We can have furniture, so fixtures that are interactive. You can grab a, a product and something happens in the space. And this list of hardware is not um, uh, defined. Huh? This is modular, so we can add and subtract from this, depending on what we're trying to do. And then we're going to take all this hardware and we wrote a piece of software that connects all these pieces of hardware. So essentially, we're creating this, this, this tool. For example, um, we put a sensor on the roof and we see what the brightness is outside. Maybe there are no clouds and the sun is blazing. Then we can also... Um, it make the store a little bit uh, lighter, because otherwise it feels a bit gloomy. Or we could say, there's 10 people in the store. Let's, 
let's, let's put some energy with music, and maybe the, the rhythm of the space is a little bit different. The music, maybe the lighting sequence, the, the screen content is a bit more energetic because there are not that many people in the space. There's 50 people in the space, we tone it down. We start connecting the, 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 the screen content, the sound, everything is a bit more toned down. We're gonna lower the temperature a little bit because all these people generate heat, etc., etc. And then, once you have that tool, you can start thinking about, okay, what kind of experience do I want to program here? Like a theater, what kind of plays are going to play in this theater? So what, what am I going to see on the screen? How are all these hardware pieces going to create scenographies that, that fit the right, um, uh, yeah, the, the right experience that I want to create for this specific brand or specific event? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some examples, because uh, we are also really scratching the surface still. We're really exploring what this could be. So I'm going to give you the, the, the first uh, ideas that we came up with to give you a bit of an idea of what I'm trying to get to. So, um, for example, in order to be able to um, connect to a space, it's important to also know where the space resides. Sometimes you're in a store, and the store could be anywhere, right? It could be interesting to see what does the, 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 the external context of a space, how can that be reflected within the space that you're in? So you get a bit of an idea of where you are. So this is also what we did in our own studio. Um, we, our studio is based amidst a, a, a large building block of houses. So we're kind of in the inner courtyard, which means that in the winter, the sun is too low to hit us directly. And this means that our light is quite the same all the time. So we created this light structure in the studio. Um, every single uh, LED is controllable, so we can, we can move the light. And what we did is we, we took the coordinates of the sun from Google, and we started to animate the sun through the space. So here is where the sun position is. And then you see here, uh, sorry, I'm trying to move my body so you guys can see it too. <laughs> but you see it here in the, in, the, in the graph. And here you can see that the light goes over the, the, the light grid. So essentially, it, the sun moves artificially through the space. And why do we want to do this? Because the, the, the location of the light, so the location of the sun gives you a sense of time. If you know where, what time it is, you know where you are. So it, this, this exercise gives you a feeling of, of uh, presence. I am here, and I'm here now. Another project that we did was how can a space behave like one entity? And this is a project that we did for Chanel, and this is the first time we, we actually programmed a tech theater for them. What we did here was um, we took over their flagship store on Place de Vendôme in, in Paris, and they wanted us to create an experience around time because they were releasing a new watch. And what we did is we took the whole space and we started to connect all the, the hardware pieces. So there's the light, the sound, some physical elements, but also the screen content. And when you look here, these windows are actually not windows, they're big LEDs. LED screens, and we rebuilt what you would normally see through these windows in 3D, so we could uh, play with that. I will just show you the video quickly so you have an idea. My favorite time of the day is sunset. golden hour, everything's that beautiful golden light. One of my first memories was trying on my mom's Chanel pumps when I was one and a half or two. <laughs> it's four o'clock. Seven thirty. Timing, that word timing, is so important. My first memory is my mum washing clothes in the bath and the sun streaming through the window. 
It's all about seconds. So why we were happy with this project because it was the first time the building started behaving as one. And this is also how we experience life. Eh? We, we, life comes to us, we experience life through all our senses at once. And this was also what you experienced when you were in this space, because everything was connected. And um, what also happened is made, it made the space feel alive, and it refers back to the puppet example. Um, it's starting to act as some sort of, sort of a behavior. The space became something that you could interact with. Uh, this is another project that we did for uh, Louis Vuitton. We, they have a heritage exhibition, and they asked us, this was in New York, and they asked us, can you create an installation that refers back to New York? So we created a digital subway. We put in a 20 meter long, a big LED wall, and a subway would come in, I will show you. Yeah. And we also wanted to put some big wind machines here so you could actually feel it, you know, but in the end there wasn't enough time to, to build that in. The reason why I'm showing you this is this, this is not a video. This is all built in a game machine engine. So this is dynamic content. And the reason um, what I would, would like, why I'm showing this is because imagine this in, uh, for example, a children's hospital where we could display a beautiful natural environment where there could be little interactions with the screen. And today it's a natural environment, but tomorrow it might be the circus. And the day after it could be this and it could be that. So all of a sudden the space could change for, from a look and feel, but also um, how you would be able to interact with it, what it does to you. Another thing that is really important, if we say that we don't want to swipe anymore, and we do say that technology is of, of, of large value when we create these interactive spaces, then how do we interact with this digital layer, this virtual layer that is in this space? How do we do that in a human way? Because otherwise we're doing exactly the same. So we are experimenting with haptic um, interfaces. And with haptic, I mean that you can control this virtual layer with your body, or that you create interfaces that we all are familiar with, that, that maybe give pressure, or that have a certain texture, or, um, well, or, or like this. And this was done with uh, Philip Schutte, it's an artist who uh, is in our studio, we work with very closely. And he was experimenting with how can a, a ball be an interface. So here you can see that the ball controls the sun. But a ball is, is such a, <clears throat> you can see some kids are coming. <laughs> and a ball for kids, if a kid understands it, then you know you're right, then it's very intuitive. And a ball is, is, is not scary, because we, we also do other projects where we have done interfaces on screens, and what we've seen and what we've tested is people are scared to interface with a screen in a public space, because, oh man, there are like a lot of people watching and maybe I do it wrong. So if you create interfaces where you can go wrong, like a ball, everyone knows the attributes of a ball. You can bounce it and you can roll it, and it was super simple, and this is what we want to do. I'll show you another example. This is a project that we, we did for Nike. And here they asked us, can you explain the technology of a soul, of a, a new product, um, in a very tactile way? Because the technology was also very tactile. The, the promise of the technology was that it would not only adjust to your foot, but also to the ground that you're walking on. So it was a very tactile uh, technology. And uh, we created a fixture. I'm explaining it because maybe it's a little bit hard to see in the, in the video, but we created this, a fixture, and within this fixture, we, 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 we span a piece of fabric. And on this piece of fabric, we, we projected um, this auxetic technology, this, this triangular technology that allows for um, adjustment to the foot and to the body. And what you do is when you touch it, we measure how deep you touch it, and then we change the, the, the digital projection, so the content accordingly. So you can imagine that you create walls which you touch and something happens. It can, right now it's a projection of the technology so you, you can experience it, but it could be anything.
how can we create a dialogue between people and the space? I think it's very important to what happens now um, a lot, especially in retail. Is that you walk into a store and you I, sometimes I don't feel completely welcome. I feel that the brand is trying to enforce its identity onto me, uh, especially when you talk about luxury uh, brands. It's so it's so so stale and so static and so pretty. It almost feels like woof, this is a little bit intimidating. And uh, it feels like I'm, I'm, I'm pushed, this, this one-dimensional message is pushed into me and I need to eat it. But I'm very interested to see if we can create spaces where you feel invited and so become part of the space. So there becomes a, a, a dialogue between the brand and, and you as a visitor. It starts happening, so you're not a visitor anymore, but you become a participant to it. I think this is, this is, this is definitely where, where things are moving, because no one eats this anymore in the future, I'm sure. So this is um, another project that we did for uh, Louis Vuitton. This was in uh, Korea, in Seoul, and we, they were, we were asked, they made an, uh, an exhibition within a big space, and they wanted us to create something for the, the entry, for something for people to interact with, and... Um, I'll show you. So what you see here, this, this girl, we track her body movement, and so she can control that airplane into the sky. And again, this, this content is dynamic, it can be anything. So her body is the interface, but she also controls the way that that room feels and, and interacts. Yeah, so, I've already come to an end, Robert, so you have some time to ask me questions. Um, what, what we want to do is create these interactive spaces where we merge the digital <coughs> with the physical world, because we think that the digital has huge, huge pot um, um, potency. Use that in a way that we invite people to interact with the space, to be present in the space, to interact with others, and so invite people to do a tech dance. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. You're welcome. Um, it's impressive what you can do with uh, technology in, in, in spaces. Um, I can imagine where it's leading to. But what, what, is, um, uh, what is very um, noticeable is that you, you work with these big brands like Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Nike. Um, are they the only uh, clients interested in creating this kind of space? No, it's just that well, there's two reasons why, we, why smaller brands are n not doing this yet. It's one, it costs a lot of money. And two, it also, I think as a, as a company, as a brand, you need to develop yourself in order to get to this. So we work, for, for example, with Margiela, but their focus is on making super interesting collections. They're not focused so much on creating huge interactive installations, right? They don't, they don't need it. It's, it's a little bit out of where they are. And not saying that is, um, that is a bad thing. It's just a different focus. I think smaller brands are not so interested in this yet. Mm -hmm. It can be more subtle. Can you imagine uh, working with a client that's not in retail? Yeah, totally. Um, well, we, we did the mini thing. I think for, for uh, automotive, it's, it's quite interesting because one, we like to work with automotive now because we, they're producing all these electric cars. So it's interesting in that sense. But these are also like the, the, the inside of a car is also an interactive space. Everything is digital at the moment. I mean, if you steer the wheel, it's not really a connection with the wheels anymore. Everything is digital. So how do you... How do you feel in a car and what, 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 how do you interact with a car? So definitely the automotive industry is also very interesting for us. Mm -hmm. What I'm really trying to get at is uh, a totally different sector like uh, the workplace or indeed um, healthcare. Yeah. I think there this kind of technology uh, could provide something that we have been discussing this morning, um, making f people feel at home and making people feel better than um, they used to be in the office, for instance, mm -hmm. which can be very 
productive and very meaningful to the um, companies they work for. Yeah. So can you imagine uh, a translation of what you are working on, for instance, for the workplace? Yeah, now I, I guess I showed you guys the example of the, the lighting grid within a space where the sun is, is moving f through our office, actually. Um, you could imagine that as aside from giving people a sense of time and space, this is what we intended to do, you could also say, well, um, when the sun goes under, the office should be em empty. Because we, we value the fact that people don't work at la late at night. You know, you could start coming up with these little social experiments. Mm -hmm. um, you could say that the, you could, the color of the light could give energy. There, I know that red color stimulates creativity, but also makes you tired. So you can start playing with that. The only thing with us, we thought about this stuff. What I like to do is create things that, that are a bit weird and that, that surprise you. Uh, that's my attention, at least, to always m make things a bit... And in the office environment, it's, it's all very subtle. It's about um, yeah, how can you make people more healthy and how can you balance the energy out. And it's super relevant. I'd like to put a little bit of um, so you would like poetry in there or something, you know, I'd like to make it a bit weird. Um, I don't have a, an example right now, but not only focus on productivity and health, but also about um, maybe not health, you know, make you a little bit like dizzy or weird or something, you know, I, just, I don't know, make it a bit, um, break it a little bit. Not only make it so perfect, because that's what's happening with technology often. <laughs> Everything is so perfect and so efficient. I think use technology also to break that a little bit. Makes it interesting, makes it more human. But um, I don't know if you watched the, um, the talk by Despina Katsikakis about the workplace, that uh, I forgot the percentage, but uh, so many people don't feel well and become sick. They feel much better when they leave the office than <coughs> while being at the office. Mm. So there's uh, a lot of uh, terrain still to uh, cover yeah. um, to improve the lives of people before you can get, I think, to the, to the artistic aspect of what, what you are doing. Would you be interested in, mm? in, do, would you be interested in, in going in that direction? I think that the, 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 the fact that people there, but why people have so many burnouts and stuff is also because it's only about efficiency and about result, about quantifiable lives. And I think this is why I think an artistic approach to even the work floor is interesting because then you show that it's not only about efficiency and about productivity, it's about living, about feeling alive, you know, and it's not only about results. So, uh, yes, there's a lot of technologies available that can make you feel happy and, and, and clean the air and the rights. Uh, I'm not saying that it's bad. It's super interesting, um, super interesting and valuable. But I would really like to add that, uh, that, uh, that other layer where you, you break with this efficiency. Let's go back to retail. Um, the projects that you realize are for short-lived events, right? Like um, pop-ups, perhaps, and events to launch a product. Could you imagine implementing um, your way of working in department stores, for instance, or in flagship stores to be there for an entire year or, or longer? Yeah, 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 yeah. We are actually working with Prada right now to build this tech theater in one of their stores. And it's a different thing. Eh? When you do an installation, indeed, it's for a short period of time, but also the user journey is quite different. There you, you, say, you, you enter, um, for example, in Nike Town, London, which is a big place in London. We have created an installation there, and it's like, oh, back there is the installation. You go in, you do your thing with the installation, and you go out again. But what if you, right now, for the, the Prada store, we, everything is embedded. You don't even see the technology. But, but the user journey is also not linear anymore. So, so it can constantly change. In real time, the experience can change. If it's, if it's more people entering, then the space adapts to that, has a different behavior. So to answer your question, when you think about implementing technology for the longer term, you have to think about it differently. You have to think about different user journeys, and you have to think about longer... Um, um, yeah, how the behavior stretches out over a longer period of time. And that's why I'm so enthusiastic about this interactive space, because we can constantly change. We can, we can tap into, for example, there's going to be Olympic Games in Japan, and we're doing the store in Japan. So how can we bring these Olympic Games in the store? How can we maybe tap into the rhythm of the, 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 what's happening there into the store? Or, what we, or can we maybe see if there's really busy outside, how does that influence the store? So, 
how do you keep a, 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 a retail location interesting for a longer period of time? To be modular, to be interactive, to constantly change things. So, and, and think about that when you program it. I think that would answer a lot of the needs of many uh, retailers. Yeah, I think so too. I hope so. Yeah. So let's open up to the audience. Um, any questions from you guys? There's a hand over here and a hand over there. <coughs> Great uh, lecture, thank you. Thank you. Um, I see one paradox, or maybe it's a challenge, uh, because in the beginning you say we're always looking at our screen, and in a s few projects that you were showing, you were enlarging that screen. Yeah. So, and then, you know, the example with the ball, which is very interesting that you touch an object and then yeah. something uh, starts moving at the screen. Immediately, yeah. you could see the children start not being together anymore. They're like, oh, what's happening on the screen? So is this a paradox? Is this a challenge? Or is it something you're still discovering? How to maybe make it even more subtle and intertwined and, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, yeah thank you for that question. I, like, when you go into a, a bar and you have a TV hanging above the bar, immediately people are not interacting right. with each other, like, uh, like zoning out and on on the TV. So I, I think we have. Um, I, I think screens are still really really interesting because you can put content on it, you can start interacting with it, um, but we have to see it in a different way than the, the, the screen above the bar. What I, what I showed in the um, Louis Vuitton example, if you, if you bring that into a hospital environment, for example, for kids, and then you can... I, I do agree with you, it shouldn't be a TV then, but how can you start, like TeamLab does very well, how can you um, use, for example, the ball or other uh, interfaces and start interacting with the space? Not see it as a screen anymore, but part of a space. But I, I see your point, eh? but that's, definitely don't want to move into like TV sitting. I don't want to put some bean bags in front of the screen. I, w I would like to see if we can start an interaction and then a play with the screen. And it's only part of the whole space. Eh? It's, a, it's not a space and a screen. It, it, the screen is part of the whole space. So um, in that sense, I think it's an, an addition to the spatial experience and it's not a TV. Yep. Okay. There was another question over there. Hi Dan, thanks. I thought it was awesome. I uh, love all the project and I think you should totally own the artistic uh, interpretation. You don't need to scale it. Somebody else will scale it. Um, but um, my question is, uh, considering that you do push into all these kind of weird and interesting new spaces, how do you bring your client along for the ride? Well, um, the installations were a little bit easier because uh, they were, we have, we've done so many, we could show, well, you know, we, we've done this and this is, it's going to be different for you, but think in this realm. Then we have the making process, so we really bring them along in the making process. So for them, it's, they can see the development of the project. But with this, this new domain that we have, and we're now we're talking to Prada about this um, interactive space. And it, it, it's a journey together, because we have some ideas, and I, I see a lot of potential, but it will be... We're really at the start, so that's why I might feel also a little bit, yeah, you could do this, and you could do this, you know, because we're also researching. I don't really know exactly yet. I have a feeling, I have a hunch that this is going to be super interesting, and the client did too, and we haven't even really talked about it. So this is what we're going to do together soon. I'm going to go there and talk to them. It's like, oh, okay, now we built this, great, and we, we feel that there is something there. What are we going to do? So to answer your question, I don't know exactly yet. But we'll do it together, and we'll, we'll get somewhere, because we both feel the potential. Does that, mean that you, uh, also, does that mean that you also have sort of a, you establish the budget together over time? Or do you know at the beginning, like, it can only cost this much? <laughs> um, uh, uh, my financial guy will love you. Uh, I, I don't really think about that stuff so much. Uh, <laughs> I just want to get this thing done. Even if we have to invest in it, I think we need to do it well for a brand like Prada and establish a relationship with them, then there's no problem. The money will come after. But yeah, there is, a, is, is a, we haven't really talked about it yet. <laughs> More questions? I don't see any hands anymore, which is, um, 
not so bad because we need to reconfigure the stage for the next uh, event on this stage um, that Dan will also participate in. So uh, it will be a panel discussion with uh, four people all together. Dan will stay on stage. We need to reconfigure, put some seating on stage. Um, Dan, thank you very much for sharing your You're vision welcome. and welcome. making us part of your journey into the future. I think you made some new fans who want to be a witness of your journey. Um, but you can stay on stage and uh, perhaps some really nice discussions with TeamLab will uh, yeah. happen because they are also supposed to be in the, in the panel. <laughs>